Today we're going to be looking into the field mods and what exactly you should be choosing on each different class. We're going to start off with the heavy tanks. On the top right, this is how you enter the field mods. Just go up here and you're good to go. Now we're just going to get rid of the webcam just so we can go through each of the field mods. The first one we're actually going to come back to last because that is the one that I really, really want to explain quite well, especially with the first track with HP boost. I'm going to get into a lot of detail about that in a second. But the way that this works is that you pretty much always want to have it on the left hand side for number four because the aiming speed is nowhere near as beneficial as the actual aim circle size. To make it more accurate, you can spend less time aiming in anyway because your circle size is smaller. Just always pick the aim circle size. Next one for level five. Realistically, this 10% stun duration is not going to matter that much. When you get stunned, you're probably going to get stunned for say 10 or 15 seconds. Even if it's 15 seconds, that 10% is only 1.5 seconds added on top of what you would have already. So just pick the view range because that is a flat 3% bonus always to your view range. So it makes no sense to pick the minus stun. For number seven, always pick the top reverse speed. This is for the versatile heavy tank. For some of them, you can choose the top forward speed, which we will go into in a second, but pretty much always the top reverse speed because the traverse speed for the turret is not that beneficial. Now for number eight, you can actually reduce the stun percentage that you've gained from level five by 8%. So you only have 2% added on top for your stun, which is nothing, like literally nothing. Um, and you get HE and ramming damage protection and also 20% to crew from injuries. So always on the left-hand side for that. For breakthrough heavy tanks like the 279E, everything on the left is going to be the same. And on the right, you want to choose the left hand side because top four speed is just better than any of what that gives you on the right hand side. And then on number eight, you get the choice between either dispersion reduction or hit points increase. Depending on what you're using, if you're using HP boost and you're not using VSTAB, then, you know, you probably want to use uh, the dispersion reduction. But if you're using VSTAB, then there's no real point of decreasing that even more. Like you might as well just put the hit points on. Um, down to you and it is down to what equipment you're running as well. There is a third one called Assault Heavy Tanks like the IS-4. Obviously everything on the left is going to be exactly the same but the last two are different. Now for number seven, both of these are kind of lose-lose situations and it really depends on the player. Like do you want to lose your two kilometers hour top speed or you could even gain another two kilometers hour especially if you combine that with a turbo you could then boost up even more. Um, and you're getting actually towards 50 kilometers an hour, or you could just go like that and you then gain the stun protection, the crew protection, and the ramming protection with HE damage. Um, I don't really know. This is actually very much personal preference and what equipment you're running as well. Um, and if you're okay with going a bit slower, it's really down to you. And for number eight, I pretty much always recommend you go for the left one uh, because if you go for the right, I mean, sure, you get a little bit less dispersion and you get a little bit better gun traverse, but that doesn't outweigh, like, look at your repair time. It's going up a lot. And also, you then have the Amorak fuel tank and engine durability of plus 30%. So I think that that is a lot nicer to have than anything that that gives you, to be honest. And finally, there is a support heavy tank, which is the form of autoloaders in this game. Obviously, everything on the left is the same. And then number seven is either you focus on mobility or firepower. For tanks like the Kran that recently got nerfed and its reverse speed is pretty bad now, I would probably choose mobility just to get that reverse speed back up. Um, because combine that with turbo and you're nearly, nearly back to where it was uh, pre-nerf. And then for number eight, you always pick the left-hand side. Kit points and the aim circle size after firing are two things that are really, really important especially for autoloaders, because after firing, your circle size is going to increase. If you can get that down to as much as, or as little as you can, it's going to allow you to clip more things. So it's never worth it to go with the aim speed. So for number seven, personal preference, but for number eight, always left. So now going into the details about the first field mod, I'm going to give you a very, very brief summary. So if you don't want to watch everything and learn about what exactly works and doesn't, you can just watch this next bit, which is coming up now. Take a look on tanks.gg, find your tank. Once you find it, look at the terrain distances. If these are the same for both hard and medium terrain, you should be using the right-hand field mod. And I mean 
if they're exactly the same without any crew skills, as you can see, at all, you should be using the right hand field mod 100% of the time. Because as you can see, when we click it, the difference that it makes is nothing. Like, look at the traverse speed as well. If your terrain resistances are not the same, like on the 50B here, and your track health is 240 or greater, completely base, so without that, so as you can see with the 50B, it's 300 track health, you should be using none. The thing is, with the 50B, if you actually add vents to the tank and you add crew skills as well as food, you're then getting your top speed and you are getting pretty close. But if you chose the right hand field mod, you're going down quite a bit. So if you don't care about anything else, there's the quick summary. Now we're going to go into more detailed on what exactly is going on here. So why did I say 240 or greater for the track health? The problem is that if you do not have 240, which is the most common along with 220, as you can see, the Carnarvon has 220 track health. The Amex 65T has 240. The difference between these two is actually quite a lot. Even though that it's just 20, that is enough to not be tracked on the first shot if you're using HP boost and don't pick anything in the first category. Meaning that an AMX 65T can use this exactly like this and it won't get tracked by a 120 caliber gun, I should add. But the Carnarvon, if it uses exactly the same loadout, is going to get tracked by a 120 millimeter caliber gun, which at tier eight for a heavy tank, you are gonna see quite a lot of. So what you have to do is make sure that you click the right hand field mod and you will not get tracked by 120 caliber guns or greater. However, if you are against a 90 millimeter gun, you will not get tracked even if you don't have anything on. So in the likes of the Carnarvon, it is pretty much essential if you are using HP boost to have the right field mod, even if it's actually not the same for the effective top speed, which causes a lot of issues. Because what happens when you have a tank that doesn't have this or has very, very poor terrain resistances and you need to use this to actually gain the HP? Well, in that case, I'd say that HP boost isn't even worth it. You might as well pick turbo over it and go for the left-hand slot, which means that in many cases, in the Carnarvon case in particular, because it does have such a low top speed, and realistically, if you actually want to get all the benefits of the HP boost, you should really be putting this in the right-hand field mod. But like, you're going to be slow. And the Carnarvon doesn't have great dispersion either. So you're going to need a rammer and you're going to need a V-stab. So it might actually be worth it to just take the left-hand field mod and just choose a turbo. Because at least that way, when you get the field mod as well, you're then going at 40 kilometers an hour. Although pretty much everything is going to track you in the first shot. So you see how this can get super, super complicated with what type of playstyle you have and if you really, really want to use HP boost. Because especially in the lower tiers, and tier 8 in particular, because tier 8 is one of those tiers where you actually meet quite a lot of 120 millimeter caliber guns. And you're just going to get tracked unless you have that right hand field mod. Unless, like with the AMX 65T, you can do this and you don't have to worry about that. So to reiterate, the majority of the time, if your medium and hard terrain resistances are the same as your top speed, and they are not going to be affected, you should use the right hand field mod with the HP boost. If they are not the same and you have 240 track health or greater, you don't pick anything in the first slot, but you keep HP boost. If you're not using HP boost, left hand slot, and just go with turbo, whatever, whatever you want to choose. But if you are using HP boost, you should never put the left hand field mod slot on because you are opening yourself up to a lot of calibers that shouldn't be able to track you in the first shot, especially for heavy tanks when you do meet those 120 uh, caliber guns in the higher tier, like the Super Conk. Like there's tons of 120 and 122 caliber guns. Now for the medium tanks, like the heavy tanks, there are four different types. There is the sniper medium tank, there is the support medium tank, 
the Assault medium tank, and the Versatile medium tank. So for the first field model slot, you get a 50% reduction to the Amarak and Engine damage penalty. And as well as that, you do also get minus 20% dispersion of a damaged gun. Now, realistically, you should be choosing the left-hand field mod every single time. And the right-hand field mod is just not that great. Like 4% to traverse speed and turret traverse speed is not that beneficial, considering that this is actually giving you quite a fair bit, especially when you get Amaract and your engine gets damaged, because that is sometimes saving you from being killed. As well as that, it can actually break the Barask because it becomes more accurate when the gun is damaged with this field mod and you have the armor perk. So this is the Barask with as good as you can possibly get it, right? We've got IAU on there, we've got bond vents, and we even have the directive for IAU. We also have all the crew skills and food. Down here, you'll see the dispersion that it is normally at 0.33, and then if the gun is damaged, it is 0.38. If we then toggle it, it gets better. So, I mean, I don't know how this still hasn't been fixed. This is this is a very, very old bug. And as you can see, we're in 118, and even on public test free, it's not even been fixed. So maybe one day they'll fix it. And if that actually happens, it might actually be better to choose this because the Barask is already quite slow. So on some tanks, you can choose the right-hand field mod, but most of them just don't bother. Um, only really choose it if you really want it to be a little bit faster because the Barak does turn like a boat. For the second field mod, it is either the improved circle size or dispersion, improved circle size every single time. Um, make the gun more accurate. If you've got V-Stab on there, that's not a problem. You have no issues whatsoever, which realistically for most medium tanks, you should be using V-Stab anyway. Now for the fifth one, it actually does depend because if you are a sniping tank, like in the sniping medium tanks, you should probably choose concealment. However, if you are a more aggressive tank or, you know, like a 907 or something like that, go and choose the top reverse speed and also the repair speed because that will help you out a lot more than any camo ever would. So it really does depend on the tank. But for the main ones that are going to be different, on the right hand side, obviously the tier 7 one, you get the choice between aim circle size or reload time. On the Leo, I mean, you can choose either, to be honest. I have used both, and both are completely viable. At the moment, I'm using um, improved aiming for it, but realistically, it doesn't matter, right? You can choose whatever suits you. For a sniping medium tank, this really is just down to you. And then for tier 8, also kind of dependent on what you need out of the tank, uh, because engine power or aiming speed. If the aiming speed is really, really, really long, which is on a Leo, then you should probably just choose the aiming speed. Likewise, if the tank is really, really slow, you should probably pick the engine power because that 5% is pretty nice. So I pick the 5% just to get the Leo a little bit faster than it already is, and it already is amazing. So it's just buffing it even more. For the assault medium tanks, tanks like the 907, as you can tell, I've got the left hand field mod on number five so that we can get the top reverse speed and also the suspension repair speed. For number seven, you have the choice between hit points or aiming speed every single time hit points. If you're using V-Stab, you don't need to worry about the aiming speed. For number eight, every single time left-hand side, that view range is way more important than the ramming damage or the engine power because it doesn't really matter. How often are you ramming something? Not very often. And 8% is not going to make too much of a dent into that actual damage received and caused. Um, engine power wise, yes, that would be nice, but it's not as nice as having 3% to view range and minus 2% to gun traverse. So left hand side every single time. Now for a versatile medium tank, obviously depending on the tank, I'm using the 121B. So I have got the uh, top reverse speed and the suspension uh, repair speed for number five. But for number seven, you can have the choice between top forward speed or view range. Now it really depends on the tank. And I've got top forward speed here, but I, you know what? No, I do not recommend you choose any of these because it's just not worth it. 55 forwards, let's be honest, that is more than fast enough. There's, there's no benefit really from either of these because you're losing something that is important either way. So yes, you could gain view range, for example, but then you're going down in top speed, which is very, very important. 
if you're going for, you know, using optics or something like that, which I don't recommend, then maybe you could choose view range to bump it up even more. But realistically, no, no, just don't choose either of these. And for number eight, the suspension durability, or you could have plus 10% to repair speed and 5% to hold reverse. The thing is, I would always choose the left hand side because if you're using HP boost, this then benefits you a lot. Because when you use HP boost on this tank with that field mod, your track health is 536, which as we've already spoken about in the heavy tanks, means that you're not gonna get tracked by 120 caliber guns. And with that much health, I don't even think 130 caliber guns will track you. Also, can I just say, the 121B's soft stats are just mental. Like, look at this. Actually gets okay dispersion as well. Hmm. You know what? I've been sidetracked, but that sub could actually work. Um, I know I said don't pick one, but for a video idea, that might actually be kind of cool. And finally, for the support medium tanks, obviously number five is a choice between what you would like. I'd probably pick concealment most of the time if you're a supporting tank, you know, with an autoloader. Um, especially like a batch out or something like that, because you can spot for yourself usually. Um, so maybe the concealment is actually pretty useful. Uh, but for number seven, it is either a reload time or you can get plus 5% to aiming speed and minus 15% to aiming circle size after firing. I would probably pick the aiming circle size after firing because that actually outweighs a lot of the reload time, especially with a TVP, because that aim circle size after firing means that you can really like properly dish out that clip without any issues. So that could actually be very, very useful for you. For number eight, you can either have top forward speed and engine power or view range. I wouldn't recommend you choose any of them. Um, as we've already spoken about, it just doesn't make sense. Like you're losing one that's just too important. And now we are moving into the tank destroyers. Obviously we have sniper tank destroyers, we have assault tank destroyers, and we also have support tank destroyers. Starting off with the sniper tank destroyers, the first one which everybody should choose no matter what they are doing or what tank it is, is the left hand field mod. Because all that you get is minus 5% to hold traverse speed if you chose the right one. And you get 30% to suspension durability, you get 15% to maintaining speed across all terrain types. Why would you ever choose the right hand field mod? because it is, makes zero sense. So always choose the left-hand field mod on the TDs, no matter what class or what specialization it is. You can then choose between aim circle size and aiming speed, always choose the aim circle size. And then this is where it gets kind of interesting because if you are a very, very hidden sniper TD, then you could choose to have the concealment after firing, especially if you're in a tank like a, the strv 103 b that could actually be pretty nice. So it's kind of dependent on what you, how you play the tank, especially considering that this field mod is always going to be the same throughout every single TD. So for assault TDs, for example, there's no point having concealment after firing, is there? For the seventh field mod, it is between aim circle size and reload time. Depending on the tank, this is exactly the same as the Leo. Um, it's just down to you. Also for number eight, it is exactly the same as the sniper medium tanks. So whatever you choose there, it's kind of dependent on the tank, but the last one, I'd probably choose engine power over aiming speed. And the number seven, it's up to you. Now for the assault tank destroyers, as you can tell, reinforced suspension, obviously. And then you can put HP boost on it because you do get the slot bonus uh, with the tank destroyers. So then you can get 114% bonus HP, the exact the same as the medium tanks to your track health. Obviously, we're choosing to have view range because, yeah, that's not going to make too much of a difference, is it? It's not even 1% if I chose um, the left-hand field mod for number five. For number seven, it's actually a little bit more interesting because on these two, you have the choice between reload time or you could go and get a bit more hit points and also protect your crew from injuries by 20%. So either of these, depending on your play style and how you want to play the tank, are a valid option. And then for number eight, I would say nine times out of 10, I am picking the engine power and suspension repair speed just to make it so it's even faster for when I need to get out of trouble. And yes, the top speed on reverse is going down, 
However, if you're using a HP boost, you're already then getting more uh, repair time or repair speed. So that's going to then benefit you even more. So I feel like that is actually the best, but you could choose either depending on how you play. And finally, for the support tank destroyer, again, number five is down to you, depending on what the tank is. FE215B doesn't really benefit from having a uh, <laughs> an improved camo. So, But number seven is either between the aiming speed of plus 4% and to aim circle size after firing or reload time. Now, this one's kind of interesting because obviously if you're in something like a Fosh 155 or a Fosh B, then that reload time or the aiming circle size after firing is super important. But then again, so is the reload time. So it just depends on how you want to set up the tank. And both of these are valid options. It depends. If I'm on an autoloader, I'd probably choose the left-hand field mod. If I'm not on an autoloader, I'd choose the right-hand field mod. And then you get the choice between, do you want some hit vehicle hit points or do you want to have a better top reverse speed? Again, it's down to you. If you're using HP boost, then probably want to have the hit points just so it gets up even more. Um, but it's really down to you. For light tanks, you get the choice between two. There is either wield or versatile. I don't know why they called it versatile. Let's be honest. It's either wield or tracked. I have sold the EBR, I know, but you can still see the field mods. So here we go. We'll start off with the wield vehicles. For field mod number one, do I want to have engine power or top forward speed? I'm pretty certain everybody who has any form of brain will choose the top forward speed because this thing goes off like a rocket. It has 42 power to weight, just standard. Right hand field mod for the first one. This one is actually kind of interesting because you can choose between the aim circle size or the reload time. Depending on how you play your vehicle, either really works. If you would like to have a better reload time, then by all means choose the reload. But if you don't, then, you know, choose that. You could even pick none if you really wanted to. For number five, again, this is kind of a uh, bit of a stupid one. Uh, would you like top reverse speed or stuff that will not happen to your tank, such as HE and ramming damage, stun protection, or protection from crew from injuries? I mean, yes, the last one can happen, but let's be honest, everyone's choosing reverse speed. For number seven, would you like another 3% to your reload time or would you like to... Uh, have a little bit less ramming damage received and you will get more ramming damage when you ram something. I'm pretty sure everybody is choosing the reload speed. Especially the people that have already chosen reload time over here are going to definitely choose reload time on number seven because that is then down to 6% reload time reduction, which is over half of a rammer without actually using the rammer itself. And then another one where would you like to extend the time of people that are spotted or stuff that doesn't happen to your tank? Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to choose the extending the time that people are spotted. These are pretty simple. I'm not going to lie. The only one that you really need to think about is probably field mode number four. Um, if you would like to have a little bit uh, better accuracy, um, because as you can see, it does go down a fair amount. Um, so if you're already using this, then, you know, you could go and choose this as well. Um, because this will then negate any loss that you make on number four. So you're only actually getting the minus 3% to aim circle size without any loss to the reload. So it could work out like that for you. Now for the track light tanks, obviously exactly the same on the left hand side. Um, choose the top speed and it's up to you for number four. But for number seven, you get either concealment or view range. Now the problem with this is that again, it's a lose-lose situation. You're losing view range or you're losing concealment. Two things that a light tank can't really afford to lose um, unless you have exceptional camo. And I mean like a lot of camo. Then maybe you can go for view range. However, I would not take anything on this one at all, no matter what tank it is. And finally, for number seven, it is either would you like to have concealment of moving enemy vehicles reduced by 3%? or the concealment of enemy vehicles behind foliage reduced by 3%. Now I was speaking to Rebel, one of my mods, and I was saying how this is a lose-lose situation. And then he pointed out, well, it's not really, because how often are you not spotting someone that's on the move? And I said, well, yeah, but light tanks, they have the same camo when they move as they do stationary. 
And he said, yeah, that's light tanks. Every, everything else loses camo. So it's pointless of choosing the concealment of moving enemy vehicles. You might as well always choose to have the concealment behind foliage. Because as soon as that light tank goes behind a bush, you're then doing minus 3% just by having this field mod, which makes a lot of sense. So it doesn't actually make sense to choose the left-hand field mod, always choose the right. Now for SPGs, there is the SPG and the SPG. So for the first field mod, I don't know, I don't play this class. Probably go for the left-hand field mod on number four. Because realistically, concealment after firing, but it's not that useful. At least then artillery might actually use their keyboard now that I've said, look, 5% to top speed. That's good artillery. Yes, you should do that. Move. Use keyboard. And then for number five, would I like minus 5% to dispersion during gun traverse or during hole traverse? Well, I mean, that depends if the artillery has a little bit of a turret or a wide gun arc. Obviously, if it doesn't have a wide gun arc, you want to have the hole traverse. Um, but if it does have a wide gun arc like the CGC, then you choose traverse, like the gun traverse. Aim circle size or reload time, aim circle size every single time because artillery already has a pretty long reload. I mean, yeah, you can get that down quite a bit, but why am I helping people hit me across the map? And would you like 10% increase to hit points and minus 8% to stun duration and protection? So would you like to have a free 2% to your aiming speed is number eight. Because the other thing doesn't apply to your tank. Well, there you go. There's SPGs done. Anyway, that is it. That took me a very long time to do. Um, so if you did enjoy, then you know what to do. Make sure you leave a comment down below on anything that I missed. Because I probably missed something. This video has been all over the place. Um, it has taken me a good like six hours or so to actually make this video. And yeah, it's... It's been a mess. But I mean, by the time that you see this, it would have been added together really, really well. At least hopefully. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.